Hey, welcome to today's segment of uh, Third Testament Foundation live stream. And today we are going to um, talk a little bit about money, 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 and according to how Martinez defines what money is and what it does in the world <clears throat> and uh, what it should do in the world uh, in order for us to have uh, prosperity for all people on this planet and uh, in order for us to have peace on this planet. So, um, we see the planet right here. nice little blue planet here and it's moving towards the star counterclockwise in its spiral cycle moving from the orange to the yellow which means from the killing principle or animal realm animal like area or zone of existence to the real human kingdom or uh, where the law of existence uh, is automatic functions of all the uh, inhabitants on the planet so that is the real human kingdom right neighborly love reigns sovereign and in this transition from the orange to the yellow from the killing to the loving nature there is of course a little come some bumps on the road yeah um, namely we are see this through the initiation of darkness hell or Armageddon what that means is the killing principle again orange this is the animal kingdom every man for himself so uh, this is the selfishness principle of selfishness you see the orange come in and the orange go out fight fire with fire yeah revenge and so forth we see there are all these natural ca catastrophes is that a Australian brush fire or is it LA I don't know but sure is a lot of fire there volcanoes and earthquakes deep underground or is it then the loving principle here in the real human kingdom again we have orange killing principle somebody slapping you on the chin what do you do well you don't send orange you don't revenge you don't kill back you shake hands being a symbol of neighborly love right the law of existence treat others the way you want it to be treated yourself and we see that this is now uh, the retaliation is now not um, orange but yellow right so that is the love we send love out we neighborly love out right love existence and it is a little bit different world we see how the clouds are gradually dispersing in the light and that is what Martinus used on the cover of his book and on the back side of his book he used this right so both principles exist in this world. We can't deny this. Grim Reaper, Skullman, whatever he's called. Is it the Punisher? I don't know. But it's a symbol of death. But we, there is a little silver lining to the dark stuff up there. Yeah, we see that the light coming through. Of course, not as much as here where we have the whole picture the fully evolved human being in God's image after his likeness so this is basically just uh, the law of existence do unto others as you want others do to you and <clears throat> before we go into the text I found uh, relating to money uh, why is this important uh, why not why am I talking about these two that one and that one well it's because here you have money right 
buy cheap, sell expensive, profit, 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 instead of the killing blood, actual predatorial animal like nature, we're actually eating each other's bodies. We don't do that in the in the, as humans, right? The animals do it, but we do it with money. So we eat each other's life force by charging each other money and making profit off of each other. And that's the type of diluted killing we see in the world today. But um, in the future, it won't be that way. We'll just have neighborly love and we work together and we don't do things for profit, right? We just do it the way Martinus describes in this text I'm going to read to you today. Really, I think it was really pertinent text, especially what's going on on the world scene today, March, what is it, 28th? Very interesting. So let's dive into the text and see what Martinus tells us about money. What is money? And it's just before we do that, let me mention all samples are covered at Martinus Institute. <clears throat> So, the Third Testament, Book of Life 1, sections 76 through 79. And it's, I think it'll take maybe a half hour or so to read. So, uh, if you don't have time, um, maybe just read it at your own pace, right? So, you know, it's section. 76. It's very interesting. I, I read it and I got a lot out of it. So let me just read this again. I might have some some pauses in between. If there's stuff, I just I'm just learning this stuff myself, so I might pause and say, "Hey, what does that mean?" And trying to figure it out for myself. So if you already know what it means, bear with me. I'm gonna come back to reading it. Uh, it's about three pages. So. And so the business principle has become fundamental to terrestrial mankind's whole instinct of self-preservation. It dominates the entire material world. Everything is business. Nations are trading, political parties are formed on business, citizens are forced to make deals. Life itself has become an article of commerce life is bought and sold as the whole of existence by virtue of cosmic laws can only be maintained on the basis that every value is balanced by an equivalent value then the business principle in its finest analysis is of a noble and cosmic nature and only becomes an ignoble and antisocial <clears throat> when it reaches the point where large groups of the community, strong and healthy individuals are prevented from being able to pay value for value, or when large groups of individuals are unable to buy themselves out of said divine reality. Such conditions will always come about in cases where something is paid for by a price that does not reflect its real value. Thus, one can talk about an excess price as well as a cut price. In both cases, there will be a profit, but in the first case, it falls to the seller, while in the latter case, it obviously falls to the buyer. Such a profit is an unpaid commodity, or a something, for which there is not a paid something in return. And consequently, when this surplus is transferred to the buyer's or seller's private property, it must create a corresponding deficit in the whole world economy, as we will realize from what follows. <clears throat> the more often that kind of depreciation in world economy takes place, the more outstanding the arrears and the the and the more accumulation of unpaid values there will be, though this arrears is like when you owe stuff, you have loans and you haven't paid it yet, right? That's all what you owe, the arrears. 
uh, let's see, so the more often that kind of depreciation in world uh, economy takes place, like when there's profit, the more outstanding the arrears and the more accumulation of unpaid values there will be. Unpaid values, right? So it's basically theft. These accumulations are again identical with all that comes under the idea of private capital. Not included in this is whatever individuals possess of daily vital necessities such as food, clothing, and shelter, for these cannot be expressed as capital until they overstep the boundaries of necessity and thereby assume the character of profit. <clears throat> so this is an interesting concept he, he talks about. Yeah, yeah, we have, it's a necessity, but if you have too many necessities or too many rolls of toilet paper, whatever you have, like hoarded, you know, it can assume the character of profit. So this is a problem, yeah. So it comes with a, an example here. When someone has, for instance, 40 suits of clothes in the, I mean, closet, but the necessary number is only four. The other 36 suits constitute capital. So it's like money in the bank, right? But as these 36 suits are actually quite unnecessary to the individual in question, they represent something worthless. For being private capital, they are untouchable for the rest of the community. So they're worthless to the rest of the community. They're just sitting there, 36 suits. Nobody can use them until they sit there and moth will come in and mold will rot the whole thing and they're worthless, right? The same thing is valid when an individual has an, in, an annual income of, say, 100,000 kroner. Uh, well, let's just do that. He, said, he writes kroner here. Kroner is a Danish currency. It's like uh, traded DKK, Danish kroner. So K R O N E R uh, Kroner. So if um, <clears throat> I thought about doing this and just say say dollars, um, but it's because it's, it's written in uh, I think it's like sixty years ago he wrote this stuff. So probably a lot of inflation, so maybe it'll fit with dollars. So. Um, I think it's easier to understand if I just say dollar instead of say kroner every time. Kroner, 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 right? What the hell is kroner? So I'm going to just say dollars even though it says KR, right? It's just a currency marker. So the same thing is valid when, uh, when an individual has an annual income of say $100,000. While the necessary income for his healthy and cosm cosmically seen normal necessities of life in the same period is only five thousand dollars. The remaining ninety-five thousand dollars is then cosmically seen unnecessary capital for the said individual. At the same time as it constitutes a private capital, a corresponding deficit in the housekeeping accounts of the general community. So this is like with the suits you know, the 95,000 you can't use. They're just sitting there. Worthless. Now, objections may very well be raised here to the effect that the private capital of such a person would, after all, benefit the community, as he might give food and work to many of his fellow men. But we must reply to this, that anything which benefits the community in such a way would naturally have to be deducted from the private capital, which, when it comes to it, represents useless profit. Didn't quite get that, but no, uh, there's not. It's not important. There's something <coughs> interesting coming up ahead, so I'm gonna go kind of th through this a little quicker, just reading it. However, it is quite right that a person with a large private capital is able to provide food and work for many of his fellow men, but as it is not yet a general rule that this is the owner's actual 
uh, intention regarding his property. But on the contrary, it is more generally considered by the representative of capital that work power is a necessary evil or an unavoidable means for the maintenance and increase of his private fortune an expense, therefore, which, like other expenses, must be kept down to the minimum. Then that part of private capital from which the community, community will benefit in the form of food and work will be only a small fraction. Here we give an example. A man has ten individuals in his uh, employment. With the help of the abilities and work power of these 10 individuals, he's able to carry out a piece of work, which gives him an income of $150,000 a year. So, <clears throat> this is in the old days, right? Before inflation. From this amount, the workers receive $5,000 in wages, while $30,000 go in taxes, rents, and other working expenses. To the person concerned, only $5,000 is necessary, cosmically seen for his own healthy and natural necessities of life. So, the sum total of all his expenses is $85,000. This amount deducted from the income gives a profit of $65,000, which, as the private capital of the employer, is lost to the community, just like the 36 suits in the closet, right? This means, therefore, that with the help of 10 fellow men, he is able to reduce the capital of the community by $65,000, or to make his fellow men in the community poor by that amount. To obtain food and work for 10 of his members in this way, it would have to give $65,000 as a bonus to the employer. Oh, what? I didn't get that. To obtain food and work for 10 of its members in this way, it would have to give $65,000 as a bonus to the employer. Yeah, I still don't get it. Probably not important. When the owners of capital give food and work to others, it is therefore not free of charge, but costs the community enormous sums, sums so large that sometimes the community is unable to pay them. Ah, as we shall see later, the result is the result is destitution, like lack of prosperity. This example shows that everything gained as profit and existing as private capital is thus identical with bonuses the community has had to give to the owners of capital so that people can be permitted to earn a few of the barest necessities for the maintenance of life. The product which gave the employer the profit in the above example could therefore have been given to the community cheaper by $65,000. Every profit of this kind, whether large or small, will now become a further liability for the community because, just like power, such profit makes it possible for its agent to oppose the payment of his levies, such as wages and taxes, due to the community, and to reduce them as much as possible, thereby enriching himself still more. And so the process continues. As this is the general principle in the present business world, and thereby the general principle of terrestrial mankind's instinct for self-preservation, it is not so difficult to see that people appear in two sharply defined camps, one made up of those who have appropriated valuable goods as private wealth or private capital, and another made up of those who possess nothing. As valuable goods represent power, the camp which has appropriated them 
will represent the stronger material power and will appear in the world as money power. Since the camp which possesses nothing is made up of a great multitude of people, it will in reality form the true community. Because of its majority, this camp also becomes a power, though much inferior to money power. This power represents the dawning power of the community, or state power. So we have the state power, we the people, and we have the money power. We, not the people. Of course, we the people are the majority, right? We have the 1% owning, what is it, 80% of the planet's resources, right? So we the people are far, by far the majority. So here's section 77. As the money power camp, <clears throat> as the, excuse me, as the money power camp thus possesses the valuable goods, that is to say, all the necessities of life, then the other camp is forced to buy the necessities of life from the first. But, just as the example showed, the people with the money power are not interested in this kind of trade unless it is based on acquiring new valuable goods, and that can only take place by overcharging. As the people from the opposite side have basically nothing to offer but their skill or work power in exchange for their necessities of life, and the other people must receive from this payment an access price, the result will be, therefore, that any work done can only be bought by money at a cut price and that any necessities of life according to the above can only be sold at an excess price. So this is the killing principle, right? Uh, every man for himself, the orange killing principle, not the yellow neighborly loved one. The result of this is that the valuable goods or necessities of life will inevitably accumulate in one of the communities above mentioned two camps, while at the same time they will disappear from the other one, which again causes superabundance, greed and idleness in the former camp, and poverty, malnutrition, and servitude in the latter. But as poverty, malnutrition, and servitude are identical with ruin, the facts mentioned here mean that one part of society is undermining the other. The whole of the terrestrial community is sapping itself. I thought that was interesting. You know how they had in the 1800s, the 1900s, the when they had the war, and they're kind of one army had uh, surrounded another army in a fort in order to get closer. They would sap these underground, half underground trenches to uh, get closer to the enemy. So it's sapping itself, right? Undermining itself. The whole of terrestrial community is sapping itself. It's not working together, it's working against each other. So everything which comes under the concept of wealth, greed, and idleness constitutes then good fortune, which definitely can only be maintained on the basis of the ruin of the community. So what's the solution? I wonder, how do you get from orange to yellow? From killing principle, money to the love principle, unconditional love principle, or all love principle, which is the real human kingdom. What do we use there? Do we still use money or what do we do there? So, section 78. But as life in its divine nature is uh, beyond ruin, the community cannot die. Only a system can die. 
The present system of the community is thus dying and annihilating itself. This is all the more noticeable now for the general principle <clears throat> for the general principle in the present order, the system we have now, does indeed mean that any terrestrial person coming into the world without being heir to capital and that's the majority, right? will be an oppressed person or someone who in reality is subject to the power of money and as such in the form of slavery is forced to pay an excess price for his existence. In other words, his daily necessities of life. But as every kind of life is searching upwards towards freedom and light, so every form of oppression will animate a struggle against the yoke, the leash, right? The weight bearing on the shoulders of these people being enslaved by the monetary system. And this means for fighting against terrestrial mankind's material oppression in the first instance will be money. I'm going to read that again. I didn't get it. And the means for fighting against terrestrial mankind's material oppression in the first instance will be money. Okay, so we use money to fight against it. The slavery. With money one can buy oneself out of money power, servitude, and oppression. The most important or most central factor in the terrestrial community's consciousness will therefore be money. According to how much money one has, one is free. One is placed higher and higher on the material social ladder, and the more one will be admired, honored, and respected. So to be the owner of a fortune constitute an ideal for terrestrial people. And consequently, all operating in an education is also based on making the individual as well qualified as possible in the struggle for material gain. To be qualified to acquire money thus constitutes a condition of life in terrestrial mankind's instinct of self-preservation as it is indeed the only means by which it can liberate itself from oppression and poverty. But as becoming a capitalist in the universal uh, <clears throat> but as becoming a capitalist but as becoming a, a capitalist is the universal goal or a goal for which every terrestrial person is trained, then those who have already reached this goal cannot be blamed at all, especially because, as a rule, it is only owing to force of circumstances and not to voluntary renunciation of valuable goods on their part that those who are opposed to capitalism today are not capitalists themselves. If the people in question had had the same conditions as capitalists, they would in the same manner have appeared as owners of wealth. But when these facts are so rooted in education and conditions of life, it must mean that they originate from people's religious or moral standard and this means it is a question of development. That is to say, this condition will only change in proportion to the gradual development of the whole of the terrestrial community. It would not, therefore, uh, it would not, therefore 
be of any help even if people with money gave away the valuable goods to the other part of the community or if the valuable goods were suddenly equally distributed between all the individuals of the community. Before a day had passed, the condition would be exactly the same as previous to the distribution in that a great number of individuals would then be ruined and others would be rich and prosperous. The real fact of the matter originates in the whole of terrestrial humanity not yet having entirely grown away from the animal kingdom. And to the same degree as it has not grown away from this kingdom, so this is again the orange, right, orange zone, uh, symbolized by orange in the symbol. So, to the same degree as it has not grown away from this kingdom, it would also be bound to show the tendencies of the same kingdom, its manifestations and its conditions of life. Therefore, no blame can be no blame can be placed on the present social order, neither on the power of money nor the power of the state the people, neither on the rich nor on the poor, neither on the criminal nor on the priest, for the social order in question is compelled solely to be an expression of exactly that level of evolution which the average terrestrial consciousness has reached. <clears throat> Just as we cannot demand that a four-year-old child should manifest anything but the behavior of a four-year-old child and an eight-year-old person be the behavior of an eight-year-old person, so one should not demand either that the whole of terrestrial humanity should manifest a higher step in evolution than that which it has reached so far, and which is precisely and fundamentally expressed by its present condition of life and social position that this condition of life and social position may be of an unpleasant and painful nature does not mean that it is at variance with the divine world plan or with the concept everything is very good and that is not always understandable why it is that so for it is just as natural that terrestrial mankind in evolving out of the animal kingdom and into the real human kingdom must traverse all the intermediate grades in the zones of experience in order to become grown up in real human existence. As it is natural for every child that is born to go through all ages and zones of experience in childhood for it to be able to grow up into an ordinary life. Just as the little child, not yet knowing that a hot stove cannot be touched without the bare hand getting burned, does touch it and burns itself, so is it with terrestrial man himself. His social order and conditions of life express the fact that he is in a zone where, in many areas, he is burning himself. Which again means that he is experiencing the fact that he should have acted differently in those areas. So if the terrestrial human community has arrived at this conclusion, it is actually due to the pain and suffering caused by its own wrong actions, solely concentrating on the animal principle every man for himself, or better to take than to give, which, as we have just noted, has been the general principle in terrestrial mankind's instinct for self-preservation. So, um, uh, better to, to, this one is better to take than to give, right? 
take, take, take. Better to take than to give. The Animal Kingdom, Orange, Orange Revenge, and here we have the better to give than to take, right? Somebody takes, but you give. Comes an orange, you do yellow. Killing principle, love. So then the last one here. <coughs> The terrestrial community is just coming to a realization that the present basis for the existence of peace and security no longer lies in physical power alone, for this crushes everything, regardless of right or wrong. But that this physical power, on the contrary, when inextricably bound up with right will prevent all forms of dissension, war, and mutilation. The knowledge terrestrial mankind is gradually acquiring through its dark experiences will then, in the very highest degree, animate a combination of physical power with real right, righteousness, and morality and with the law of existence itself right more blessed to give than to take or to unto others like what others do to you and i think that's the same right could you rather have people give you stuff than they take from stuff from you right so it is more blessed to give than take is is the same as the do unto others as you want others do to you unless you're like sadomasochistic or something like that right so law of existence more blessed to give than take <clears throat> so the road to the great peace thus goes exclusively through this association of right with might And to the degree that trust in mankind succeeds in fusing true right with might, so to the same degree, so to the same degree will peace exist on earth. So when we have a state power representing we the people, and that is a true right. That means uncorrupted state power. Then the state power also have the might, the military enforcement, the leg of the governance. And when terrestrial we, mankind here, terrestrial mankind, succeed in fusing those two, then we will have peace. And that's understandable, right? And uh, we're almost there, but not quite. It's been not like that uh, for a long time, and we have not had peace on Earth. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens to this monetary systems as we uh, evolve into the <clears throat> real human kingdom. So we see how it's a gradual movement towards the star here. More and more yellow coming into the evolution, evolutionary stages of the <clears throat> of the planet. So that also means the beings on the planet, including humans, which Martinez states that uh, as uh, represent the nervous system of the planet, with the brain cells, right? The brain cells of this planet. Well, imagine how small we are in this. You see the planet there? Like, you have brain cells. I'm, I'm not going to zoom in like that. Brain cells. I mean, tiny, tiny, tiny little brain cells on this planet. So, we're going to figure it out, yeah, with this monetary system to make it a uh, 
fair system. And uh, I think it's something with that you can only pay with, you cannot pay with money, you can only pay with the, the hours that you have actually worked doing something that uh, creates some kind of a product that people want, you know, it, you, you can't just live off of other people's work. So I think that's uh, because it's taking, right? And that's the animal kingdom. So we need to get into this system where we are. Um, giving. So how do we incorporate that into a fail-safe monetary system that you just have to give otherwise you know you you yeah what? I don't know. I don't have the answers to that one. So that's going to be interesting to watch how this develops and um, We'll see you next time on the live stream here in the Third Testament. And see you soon.